In addition, the participation of an increasing range of local entrepreneurs within the industry is of special importance to the government since tourism must be seen as an important avenue of economic empowerment for all of our people. Of course, in our own quest to promote greater economic vibrancy in our communities, we do intend to foster strong economic linkages between the tourism sector and agriculture. Our aim, of course, is to promote food security and to grow the food that we require to feed our people and our many visitors and to expand our exports to neighboring islands wherever this is feasible. We view the agricultural sector as critical, critical to our programs of entrepreneurship development, export capacity generation, and rural development. We shall therefore continue to support the development of the agricultural sector through the provision of advanced training of extension officers, the scientific forecasting of market needs for the benefit of farmers, the coordination of farm supply, the drilling of wells, and the provision of expanded water catchments and storage for irrigation purposes, the expansion of feeder roads, the provision of targeted incentives and assistance aimed at attracting more entrepreneurs into farming, and the continued collaboration with international agencies to secure more technical assistance and training for all of our farmers. Fellow citizens, our aim is, to, is the creation of a service-oriented economy, with tourism playing the leading role while financial services, information and communication technologies and offshore university services play the necessary supporting roles. But economic activity in these sectors generates demand for agricultural produce, handicraft and locally manufactured goods. We will therefore continue to develop and support the sectors that produce these various goods. We will also continue to support enclave industries and provide market access for them through the various multilateral and bilateral trade agreements that we enter into. Our focus is on the production of high value added manufacturing goods that would benefit from our excellent infrastructure and educated workforce and would have the capacity to generate sufficient value to pay decent wages to our hard working workers. We are therefore pleased that some of the manufacturing enterprises are already devoting their facilities in St. Kitts to the production of high value added goods requiring high levels of skill and education while the low value added goods are produced in other jurisdictions with an abundance of unskilled but relatively cheap labor. Of course, human resource development is the cornerstone of our development strategy. It is through our human development programs that we empower our people and give them the means of fully utilizing the God-given talents and abilities. Hence, in our education programs, my government places great emphasis on the development of the whole person, physical, spiritual, mental, and psychosocial. The programs at the Sadler's Secondary School, which will be replicated in other secondary schools, provide us an important avenue for tapping into and developing the multiplicity of talents and skills that are often overlooked in a classical secondary school setting. Talents and skills 
that when properly developed can turn insecure young people into calm, confident, vibrant, revenue producers, family members. This school would also facilitate lifelong learning opportunities for adults in the relevant communities after regular school hours and would permit greater interaction between adult members of the society and the children of the nation in a range of after-school settings. The patterns and demands of modern life have caused us all to lead increasingly isolated lives. Work begins earlier and now work ends later. Children's playtime often involves an electronic gadget as opposed to a playmate. Stories are heard from the television or from the internet as opposed to a relative or older friend. And this society and others around the world are reaping the bitter fruit of this social isolation and alienation. My government refuses to see either itself or the people of St. Kitts and Nevis as trapped victims of this global and deadly phenomenon. We believe that as a people, we have the power, that power to change this particular trajectory. And this is why, in an attempt to create young people with heightened levels of trust, hope, compassion, confidence, and self-respect, and in order to produce increasing numbers of young people, young people who feel that they are connected to the broader society, concerned and responsible adults will be asked to familiarize themselves once again with our nation's schools by going there after school once or twice per month and imparting a skill, imparting a talent, imparting a philosophy, social standards, joy, or even hope to the young people who have for too long been wooed by others and now need to be wooed by us all. We as adults cannot fail to do our part here, for in doing so, we will seriously undermine our right to utter a word of condemnation about the behavior, the attitude, or the brutality or of any of these same children five, seven, or ten years from now. For my government, education will be more about the development of the whole person because it is only in doing so that we will stand any chance of correcting precisely those ills that so bother and concern petitions and divisions the people of the Caribbean, and the people of the wider world. Youth development through intergenerational interaction is critical. That is how we develop psychologically healthy individuals. This is how we develop stable societies. And this is how my government will continue to move us on the human level forward. My fellow citizens and residents, human resource development also entails the provision of adequate health care.